Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in today's video I want to share with you a very interesting chess puzzle composed by Austrian composer of chess problems and endgame studies Alois Votava. The puzzle was first published in 1944 in Deutsche Schachzeitung. The task is to win with the white pieces. You can pause the video and try to find the solution. By the way, the task is pretty easy and by thinking for a while, I guess that you can find the solution. Ready? In order to win the game, first white is playing b6. Yes, white will now rely on the passively placed black pieces and with b6, white is cornering black queen further and is locking up the queen side. By the way, in case you were thinking of c8 knight, let me tell you that this is a false path. We will come back to this once we go through the main line. The winning move is b6, black queen retreats and we have c8 queen. But this allows black to play bishop d7 check and win this queen on the spot. But instead of, for example, queen takes d7, which can be suicidal for white, in that case suddenly black pieces will get activated, we are sacrificing the queen. Yes, this is very impressive. We are sacrificing the queen in order to trap this bishop as well. And after bishop takes c8, we are playing bishop h2 check, king d7. And now a question arises, how are we going to make a progress? Seems to be an impossible task, right? How to make a progress with the bishop and the king. But just have a look. King f7, king d8, still black is not hurrying to push forward his pawn. We have to force it. And in order to force black to go for a pawn push, we need to put black in a position of Tsuk Bishop e5, king d8, bishop f6, check, king d7, and bishop e7. By bringing the bishop on e7, now we successfully manage to restrict the movement of this king, and black is in Tsuk and is forced to play h5. And now we have to repeat that maneuvers all over again we have to go for the triangulation once again in order to force black to move his pawn and win it after bishop e7 finally black is playing h4 of course we are not taking into consideration a move like queen a7 there will be time for it and we are happily winning it king d6 and now we are performing that maneuver once again, but this time in order to force black to give up his queen. There we have it. And now black can't move his king, and the only piece which is possible to move is the queen, right? Black is forced to play queen a7, after which we are winning it. King c7. And now here comes another beautiful move. Of course, you can win with a simple queen promotion, but the move which allows white to go for forced mate, forced mate in four is bishop d8 check. King takes d8 and a takes b8 queen. King d7, queen e5, and then after king d8 we are announcing a checkmate. Truly a wonderful study, right? And now I would like to go back and show why, for example, c8 knight is not good. Because after king d7 knight takes a7, black has this a takes b5 move. And suddenly black is managing to fight back, you know. Moreover, black even has better chances and probably black can even convert this into a victory. That's why you should play b6 and then go for a pawn promotion, sacrifice that queen as well, uh, restrict the movement of black pieces, put black in, in a position of Tsuk Tsavank and win this pawn, and then win the queen, and that's how the winning line goes. So this is it, dear chess lovers. Hope that you enjoyed this beautiful chess puzzle. Yeah, this was really a good one. Feel free to share it with your friends as well. And in the end, let me also sharpen your tactical skills. 
Please take a look at this position and try to find the winning line for white. As usual, we'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in my next video.